Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy AA Round 2 for 20, bringing you guys week 4 of the weekly transactions. Now we have a few different trades coming this week. We have also a few transactions as well, so let's get right into it. First up, we have George, coach of the San Francisco Arc Niners, and he's trading with Crimson, coach of the Detroit Ceilings. The mons that are being traded, you might ask, is going to be Volcarona for Entei. Now, George is picking up Entei from Crimson. He originally initiated the trade with Crimson. Crimson figured he'd accept because he has Cabalion and Crocodile that are already phenomenal physical sweepers, but he really doesn't have any powerful special offense because he has mons such as Tentacruel and Sylveon that can hit hard, but Volcarona is what he really needs for his team. Also, it gives him a mon that can actually run at reliable Jolly Nature or Timid in Volcarona's case, so it can reach that base 100 mark without having to go to 299 instead, because Entei, if you want to run Sacred Fire, you have to run it Adamant. So, actually, the speed would be different at level 50, but it would still be the fact that he has to run it adamant for Entei. So, he can run a plus speed nature Volcarona if he needs to, which is pretty big. Allows him to have speed some base 95 and 90 speed mons. So, that's going to be great for Crimson. Also, it can set up and sweep with things like Quiver Dance. Fiery Dance can boost special attack as well. Volcarona is a phenomenal special move pool, so I think this will help Crimson a lot as well. The only thing that I feel like he's going to have to watch out for is rocks, but at the same time, he has decent hazard removal and things such as Tentacruel. So, I'm not too worried about Crimson running this. And for George, George mainly wanted to pick it up because he felt that that hazard weakness was really biting him in the ass, and it made it so that he had to run Defog on either Togekiss or Mew, which really hinders them because Togekiss can really not run an offensive set as it runs into a four move slot syndrome in a sense because you really need either all offense or all defense. It's hard to run a mixed set that's both bulky and offensive with Togekiss because you have things such as Nasty Plot, your coverage moves, Roost, Thunder Wave, Baton Pass. So it's really hard to fit moves onto Togekiss, and when you already have to lock one of those as Defog, it really hurts it. And it also hurts Mew as well, because you can have you can have literally any move on Mew pretty much. And forcing Defog on there is really horrible for a mon like Mew. That can be both physically and especially offensive, defensive and especially defensive. It can be utility, but forcing it to run Defog is not necessarily something that you want to have to do every week, just to bring full Corona. So the only thing that George is going to have to worry about though, is that with Volcarona being gone, and picking up Entei instead, it's going to be a little bit troublesome because it can't run a plus speed nature, as I said, if he wants to get Sacred Fire. Though there are still ways around that by running Flare Blitz instead, but I prefer Sacred Fire personally. So I feel like George, though, is going to be fine. He mentions also that he has Triple Dog, which is a phenomenal thing. I think he's the first person to do that in the entire league of the GBA through all seven seasons. So shout out to you, George. Even if you're not, it's still pretty pretty surprising that you got all three. Uh, and I think they're going to do pretty good on your team. Also, it's really nice getting you some physical offense. Uh, next up, though, we got Tom, coach of the San Jose Sharpedos. And he is dropping Incineroar and Lorantis for Darmanitan and Shiftry. Now, the main reason you want to pick up Darmanitan is because it's just a nuke button. You click a move and it's, something's going to die, especially if you're Choice Band. And even then, Choice Scarf, you're still going to hit like a truck off of that base 145 attack set. Gets moves such as Flare Blitz and Super Power, which hit pretty well. Also, Wild Charge to hit those water types. U turn for initiative. Whereas Incineroar, it has. It's still a slim move pool, like Darmanitan's is, because Darmanitan's pretty slim. That's about all it gets. And Incineroar is as well, but at least Incineroar doesn't need to run a Scarf every week to actually outspeed certain Mons. And even with a Scarf, it's only about an average speed tier Mon, and most Scarfers will outspeed it, whereas Darmanitan reaches around where most Scarfers would hit. Also, Picking up Shiftry was mainly because he's losing out of the Dark type with Incineroar being gone, and Lorantis was kind of just dead weight on his team. And Shiftry gives him nice Sucker Punch and Knock Off, which Incineroar lacked, so he gets more priority. In addition to that, Shiftry can be both specially and physically offensive, and has Defog, so it's even more hazard removal for Tom. And he says that while you may argue that Intimidate could have been released any week now, it probably wasn't going to be. I even mentioned this to Tom. I don't think it's going to be before the season ends, let alone by the time transactions close. He didn't want to have to risk it and risk Garmantia getting picked up because it's a pretty good Pokemon, so someone's bound to take it. And I kind of agree with him on that. I'm not a huge fan of Garmantia myself, but I know the power it can give to a team. So I feel like waiting on it, especially till week seven, that's like three weeks. So he wouldn't have really, wouldn't have really been comfortable waiting that long. And I agree. I see the position 100%. Also, I think that picking up Shiftry was a lot better than having Lorantis on the team because Lorantis is kind of dead weight. It has very, very limited move pool, even more limited than Darmanitan. So I think it's going to be really well for Tom's team. I think that, especially with this extra priority and these faster mons, it's going to really help Tom's speed tiers and his offensiveness because Hitmonlee is not offensive, guys. It's not offensive. And finally, though, we have Gym Leader Geo, coach of the San Francisco Giantes instead of the Arkham Niners. And he is dropping Ferrothorn for Amoongus. Now, this is the second time that Geo has picked up Ferrothorn in the GBA history. 
and it's the second time he's dropping it. He's replacing it with Amoongus because he feels like that to get recovery on Ferrothorn, you either need to run Leftovers or go for Leech Seed, which is very true, It's as that's its only recovery. Whereas Amoongus, it can literally just switch in and switch out because of Regenerator, which is huge for Amoongus. It's going to be great on George's team as well. I feel like that it's going to help especially because he can also go for Synthesis or Giga Drain and get himself back, something that Ferrothorn cannot do. It also gives him still a way to handle Fairy types with things like Clear Smog and Sludge Bomb off of Amoongus can handle electric type still, has a great move pool, even gets foul play, which in my opinion is a great move to have in a defensive Pokemon because you're going to take hits anyway. And if he's going to just foul play, he can kill off a Mon or he could always just go for clear smog if he wants to kill it off that way by ruining its setup. Uh, Amoongus also has very nice HP stat and can be mixed bulk. So it's unlike Ferrothorn, which you're most likely running physical because a lot of fire types are special and you're going to die anyway to fire hits for the most part. Amoongus can run a mixed set because it doesn't really have a four times weakness that's going to just kill it off. It's either a pure physical type or a pure special type. So Amoongus is a lot easier to run a mixed set and I really like that about it. Also it has a lot of options on his team that it pairs nicely with such as Bronzong and Finny, especially Tapu Finny though. So I feel like this is going to be a really nice switch for Dio. So I can't wait to see what he does with it. The only thing that he does point out is that he loses on spikes, which is unfortunate, but he still has ways to pick that up in the future. I don't think it's gonna really hurt him that much he still has hazards in other ways so i don't think that it's gonna bother him but that is it for the weekly transactions this week guys if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like down below comment what you guys thought of this week's transactions as there were definitely a lot of them and a lot of interesting ones at that and until then i will see you guys next time peace out